come to food banks, you see items like peanut butter or canned goods. Starting today, you'll still see items like these, but you'll start to see a lot more of items like this. Imagine seeing a 50% jump in your water bill. That's what the city of Surprise hopes to do over the next six years. The Senate just voted against SB 1310 with 18 no's and 12 yeses. That means that Common Core will continue to be taught and Arizona schools will still receive federal funding. On June 30th, all of Arizona mourned as reports about the fallen 19 members of the Granite Mountain Hotshot crew began to surface. U.S. Congress is now considering this option after a report from the TSA. It contains 14 recommendations on how to make airports safer. The lawmakers who sponsored SB 1062 are dealing with most of its backlash, but today the group that sponsored that lobbied for the legislation is taking heat too. This protest about SB 1062 isn't taking place outside the Capitol. It's in front of the Center for Arizona Policy. What happened with 1062 is that the true culprits are not in the state legislature. If you follow the puppeteer strings, they lead to this building. And they lead to one person, and that is Kathy Herod. Herod is the president of that group, and citizens for a better Arizona want her to apologize for writing the controversial bill. I apologize for manipulating politics to pass SB 1062. We regret offending Arizona values and bringing shame to our state. When the protesters were not allowed into the building, they tried to shut it down. It's incompatible with Arizona values, and it's a danger to our communities. Cronkite News repeatedly tried contacting Herod's office for comment by phone and in person, but our phone calls were not returned and we were not allowed inside. November 1st, two TSA agents at LAX left a security checkpoint for their break. You know, it's a different world we live in today. One person lost his life and three others were injured in a shootout. I think that anything we can do to make passengers safe and secure is a good idea. Sheila Berman has flown the LAX to Sky Harbor route twice this week. And she supports a new proposal from the TSA to have an armed law enforcement agent stationed at airport security checkpoints during peak hours of operation. Peak hours are different at every airport, but here at Sky Harbor, they are described as when the freeways are busy. So if the freeway is crowded, there would be an armed guard at the security checkpoint. While TSA believes this move would make airports safer, some air travelers are not so sure. I don't think it would make me feel more safe, no. No, I mean, just because someone has a gun doesn't mean they're safe. A TSA spokesman told Cronkite News that its agents would not be the ones who are armed. Outside law enforcement officers would handle the weapons. Someone with a gun can take out someone else. Um, as long as whoever is there is well trained, I don't have any problem with that at all. Now it is not clear what law enforcement officers would be brought to Sky Harbor if Congress approves TSA suggestions, but Sergeant Trent Crump with the Phoenix Police Department told us that Phoenix PD currently has officers at Sky Harbor who work with TSA. The bill's many protesters are calling Senator Kimberly's refusal to hear the bill undemocratic. Medical marijuana's impact on post-traumatic stress disorder would be funded under House Bill 2333. This is not taxpayer money. It's all the money that's generated by medical marijuana patients who pay $300 a year to have that medical marijuana card. That's where the money's coming from. This bill is supported by the Department of Health and Human Services and the House of Representatives. This was a vote of 55 to 2. This cut directly across party lines. But this bill is now dead because Senator Kimberly Yee, chair of the Senate Education Committee, would not allow it to be heard. That is obstructionist. That's not, that's not what should be going on in a democratic society. Protesters believe that Senator Yee is not going to budge on her decision, so they've been reaching out to President of the Senate, Andy Biggs, for his support. This, need, this deserves a vote in, in the Senate. Cecil says they have not heard back from President Biggs. We tried contacting Senator Yee and the members of her education committee several times. We even showed up to their offices, but our phone calls were not returned and the constituents said they were not available for comment. Tonight's rally is scheduled to take place at the top of the hour.